Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Arduino and Electronics video tutorial series. Well, after the last video, a whole bunch of people sent me notes and said, well, that video was all well and good, but if I can't read schematic diagrams, it's kind of worthless. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to read schematic diagrams by designing a NAND gate from a schematic diagram. I provide a link to the finished circuit in the description below, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take this schematic diagram and create a circuit. And you can see here the logic behind a NAND gate. It's basically the opposite of an AND gate. And to power our circuit, we are going to put the 5 volts from the Arduino up here in the positive and the ground in the negative. And whenever we are modeling our circuit, what we want to do is take the schematic diagram in parts. So what we're going to do here is go from our voltage to a resistor and then finally to an LED. So I'm going to connect up the parts so that we have voltage. And I on purpose picked a schematic diagram that didn't include the LED because very often you're working with schematics that don't you know, do exactly what you want. You have to think through the process. So we have our voltage source set up. And then what comes next? A resistor. So we'll go and get our resistor and make sure it's a 1K resistor and then plug that in as well. And now we continue on by plugging our LED in, as we see here on the schematic. So we know about LEDs that the shorter wire on the LED needs to go towards ground. So we're going to connect that up to the board, just as we know how LEDs work. Up next, we need to see here that the resistor is going to go into the collector part of the transistor. And we know that that is on the right side if the flat part of the transistor is down. So we plug that also into the board. We then see that there is a resistor that goes into the base of the transistor. So we go and get that resistor and plug it across to the gap in our breadboard and into the base of our transistor. And we know that we need a switch and I decided I want to put the switch away from the circuit. So I'm just going to move it over there and then I'll wire it up to make it work. And of course I'm going to need another switch and I'm just going to put it next to that switch. And now I just continue and I can see that it goes from the emitter of the first transistor to the collector of the other one. So I'm just going to go and get that transistor and put them on the board and keep them separated by one space on our breadboard. And then I add a wire to go from the emitter over into the collector. I also see that the transistor is going to go to ground. So I'm going to plug that in. And also there is going to be a resistor that is going to go to the base of the transistor. So I'm going to get that resistor also and plug that in exactly where it goes. And then we'll have that part set up for our circuit. And now it's time to get our switches working. And once again, this is an incomplete schematic, but you very often have to work from those. So I know I need a power source for a switch. So I'm going to plug in the power source for both of my switches. And now all I have to do here is finish up the switches. So I can see here that our resistor is going to go into the base for both of the transistors for the switch. So I'm going to go over and plug them from the resistor over into the other side of the switch for both of the switches. And now the circuit is completed and can be tested. And if I plug in my power source, you can see the lights on, which it should be because when both the switches are open, it should be on. And if I press one of the buttons, it also stays on. If I press the other button, it still stays on. And if I press them both, it goes out. So now what I'm going to do is take you over into some circuit design software and explain completely how an AND gate works. Okay, so you saw me take the schematic diagram and design the circuit. Now I'm going to make it so that you have a complete understanding of how the circuit works. So I'm using software called iCircuit. I'm not sponsored to use it. I just use it because it is cheap. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get our Arduino or basically our power source. And then we have to think about all the other different parts. Well, we have switches, so it probably makes sense to come in here and go and create a couple switches. So let's just grab this guy and throw him in there. And let's go and get a copy of said switch. And each of these switches is going to be tied to a resistor. So I'm going to go and get myself some resistors here and throw that in there. And then we'll be able to actually run everything with this circuit and you'll be able to understand how it works. All right, so we have that. Then we are going to also have a transistor, of course. 
and I'm not really explaining how this software works. You basically just drag and drop things off of there. All right, because it's not a tutorial on iCircuit. If you want to see that, then you can ask for that in the description. Then what else are we going to have? Well, we're going to have a resistor that is going to go to our LED. So let's go and throw that guy up here. And then we are going to, of course, have an LED. So let's go and get that guy as well. Slap him inside of there. All right, so we're getting everything. It's coming together. So here are all the components we have. Two switches, three resistors, two transistors, and an LED. Now what I need to do is just wire them up so that they will work. So I'm just gonna take this guy right here. This is just a wire and drag it over here. And then we will connect it to the resistor. Then I can connect it to the switches. And then I can go and connect this to our tra our transistors oops let's go and get all that and smooth it in here a little bit and get some more wire and drag that up there then we can go and drag the wire for the led there and i'm just tightening this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better and then i need to go and connect all of my other different components here so let's just leave them in there i can leave the resistors at 1k get that the transistors of course are going to connect to each other this guy right here i'm going to go i'm going to need a ground for my led of course so let's go and get that drag that up here connect that right there grab this guy right here and connect it right there and now you have a nand gate and as you can see with both of the switches being open just like an nand gate should you can see the flow of current up here into our led and it works so what happens if we go and we close one of the switches so let's close it you can see nothing has been affected the transistors are in essence not able to flow the current away from the LED so they continue working so let's open that one and let's close the other one I think you can tell what's going to happen again the current flows because this breakpoint here is keeping the current from flowing away from the LED however if we come in and close them both now we have a path for our current and hence our LED does not light so now I hope you have a complete understanding of how a NAND gate works and you have a pretty good understanding of how to read schematic diagrams and take them and turn them into working circuits. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.